customize your MacBook Air. This MacBook Air is $1,599 with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 SSD. This MacBook Pro is the same price, 16 gigs of unified memory. Both of these MacBooks are $1,600 and both have an M4 chip in it. So would I buy the thinner one or the thicker one? They even both have trees on them. Well, Alex, you'll say, obviously, why would you buy the MacBook Air when you can have the MacBook Pro? So hopefully today I'll be taking these through the paces, doing some software developer related tests and answering this question. Why did Apple make such a grave mistake? <laughs> Let's start off with the C++ sorting single core algorithm. This is a quick sort and it uses only one core and we're sorting 10 million integers and go. Now, while that's running, let's take a quick peek. This version of the MacBook Air is the 10 core variety and 10 cores for the MacBook Pro. What am I expecting here? Well, since they both have the same chip in it, the M4, and this is a single core process, then I'm expecting that this will be the exact same time or very close. In Activity Monitor, you can see over there that 100% of the CPU is being used for the main process. 100% means it's running only on one of the cores. Same thing happening here. Oh, 100.1. Hey, sometimes the process goes from core to core and Mac OS manages that process. It may be to keep the thermals in check. One core is getting a little too warm. It's going to hop it over to another core. You continue that process from now on, but it's still a single core operation. Two minutes and 33 seconds for this on the MacBook Pro and two minutes and 36 seconds on the MacBook Air. Are we already starting to see signs of thermal throttling here? Not yet. I don't think so. This is just a margin of error kind of thing. And since we're talking about single core operations, let's talk about web development, specifically the Speedometer 3.0 test, which tests a bunch of JavaScript frameworks running in the browser, which are all single core operations. So this does 2D MVC in React, jQuery, a bunch of other frameworks. You can see charting libraries and so on. Whoa, <laughs> uh, this is a pretty nice score. Uh, but again, we're really, really close here. When are we gonna start seeing differences? But again, the MacBook Pro wins by one point. 51.7 for the MacBook Pro, 50.6 for the MacBook Air. Well, shoot, now I need to do a multi-core score to see if there's any difference, but these models both have 10 cores. So should we expect the same results again? Well, let's see. This time, <laughs> we're sorting a lot more integers. We've got 100 million, wow. And let's go, boom. Let's peek at Activity Monitor here. And you'll see that now our C++ application, which is a compiled test, I'll do a interpreted test in a bit. Here we're using 970% of that CPU on the MacBook Pro, and that aligns with using all the 10 cores. And you can see the history chart right here. All the 10 cores, including the efficiency and the performance cores are going to work here to do this sort. And this is a merge sort, which is my favorite sort. I love that merge sort, it's so beautiful. Beautiful and elegant. Yeah, I know. I'm a nerd. Oh, what am I hearing here? I'm hearing fans. Wait a minute. I should say fan because the MacBook Pro, this model MacBook Pro only has one fan. But you know who doesn't have a fan? The MacBook Air. If we're kicking up the fan and the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan, then oh, does that mean that the CPU is working so hard that it's heating up the machine to the point where the fan needs to kick in to cool things down so it keeps going at the same speed, but the MacBook Air can't do that, so it's gotta slow down. And that's called throttling, by the way. So what's gonna happen here? Here's the result. Now we've got a little bit more of a spread, and this is not a very long compilation. We've got two minutes and 18 seconds on that MacBook Pro, and two minutes and 26 seconds on that MacBook Air. The gap widens. Here's the MacBook Pro, and you can see that right there in the middle, around the six or seven key, that's where the processor is. And it's not that hot, not as hot as it is over here on this hot spot where the fan is blowing. Now, other models like the MacBook Pro M4 Pro and the M4 Max have two fans, so you'll see two hot spots, and that fan is drawing that heat away from the processor right there we're up to 40 degrees on that spot but let's take a look at the macbook air oh oh look at that look the heat is all right there in the processor nothing is taking it away and we're at a much higher temp now here we're at almost 45 degrees right there it's in the body and it's in the processor and it's staying in there not being drawn away and that my friends is going to cause throttling on things that need to be 
cool down, especially multi-core demanding tasks. Second time I run this and the spread is even more. Two minutes, 17 seconds on the MacBook Pro, two minutes, 28 seconds on the MacBook Air. How about me? How cool am I? That was a silly nerdy joke, excuse me. Now that was compiled code. Let's take a look at interpreted code. And I happen to have a Python program here. And this is the Mandelbrot algorithm. This setup uses all the cores as well. And I've shown this uh, on the channel many times before. Now I wanna see what happens if you run a small little program in Python here and there. I'm gonna give this program a parameter of 1000. Okay, this is, this is way, way too fast, but hey, the MacBook Air won. 0.2 seconds versus 0.5 seconds. Let's give it a little bit longer time to think. We'll go with 5,000 and I'll also pipe this out to dev null so that we don't see that mess and boom. Okay, that's taking a little bit longer, that's good. Here we've got 3.2 seconds on the MacBook Air and 2.99 seconds on the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro is already winning. Definitely we can see a performance difference. Even though they have the same exact chip, the same number of cores, and for single process operations like JavaScript, they're gonna be pretty much the same. Let's give this thing the proper parameter according to the test. I'll link to the test down below, the code if you wanna see it. And the proper parameter is 16,000. Let's go. Now, even though this is interpreted code, it's still going to be demanding in this case case. So it really depends on what kind of operation you're running. You can see that we've spun up a bunch of Python uh, processes here. There's that CPU load. It's going kind of crazy. Not, not this column. That was the previous test. This new column right here. This one didn't take too long to run. So let's see. Yeah, 34 seconds here, 29 seconds here. So is this a no brainer? Why would you ever get the MacBook Air here? This video is sponsored by Bitrix24, your all-in-one virtual workspace to keep things organized and boost productivity. Bitrix24 brings together task and project management, team collaboration, and a full-featured CRM all in one place. And since it's mobile-friendly, you can work from anywhere. They've got over 35 free tools that you can start using right now. Create tasks and subtasks with checklists and manage them using Kanban boards, lists, or Gantt views. Whatever works best for your team, you can stay connected with team chats, HD video calls with screen sharing, and shared document access. You can even schedule meetings with shared calendars, keeping everyone in sync and reducing stress. With a built-in CRM, you can track leads, manage deals, run email campaigns, and centralize client communication, and all this in one place. There's also an AI co-pilot to help draft messages, log calls, manage tasks, and yes, the free plan supports unlimited users. If if you're ready to simplify your workflow, click the link in the description to get started with your free Bitrix24 account today. You'll see how much smoother your workday can be. Why would you ever get the MacBook Air here? After all, the MacBook Pro has a better screen. You can probably even tell from that camera over there that it's a little bit brighter. It has a 120 ProMotion display, 120 hertz. This one has a 60 hertz display. The MacBook Pro is 14 inches, this is 13 inches, although these do come in 15 inches, but they're more expensive. The MacBook Pro has smaller bezels than this one. It has a slightly better trackpad. I could feel a difference. It's not much. They're both really good trackpads in the industry. And the keyboards are both really good. Although I think the MacBook Pro has a slightly higher keys. Feels a little bit better. MacBook Pro has an HDMI port. It has three Thunderbolt ports as opposed to just two. They do both have MagSafe. And MacBook Pro also has an SD card reader. The battery on the MacBook Pro is bigger. It's 72 watt hours versus the 53 on the MacBook Air. So it lasts longer. I mean, they both will handle a full day's worth of work. And it has, of course, better speakers. Okay, enough bagging on the Air. Air has some benefits. It's lighter, it's thinner. We knew this already, but this particular model that's the exact same price as the Pro has double the memory. 32 gigabytes of memory in there versus 16 in here. Memory, my friends, might be an even more important factor and that MacBook Air has more of it. Why am I saying it's more important? I mean, so what? You have less memory on this one than that one. Is that gonna slow down my things? <laughs> the MacBook Pro is still faster, right? <laughs> Let me show you. I have here a .NET project. And by the way, this has nothing to do with .NET. 
.NET is plenty fast. I just have a very simple example to do this with .NET. This is a pretty large project where I generate 100,000 namespaces and classes and random ones. And I do a bunch of random complex calculations to ensure the compiler doesn't exclude these things and everything is counted and compiled when the code is built. The point is that this is pretty large and it's going to require more than the amount that's available. If we're talking about a comfortable compilation, this is gonna require more than the 16 gigabytes that are available on the MacBook Pro. So let's build this thing. I have some bootstrap code I wrote called run benchmark, and that basically kicks off the .NET compiled process. On the MacBook Air, 32 gigabytes is what I have available. We've got 212 megabytes of swap used. So we've generated the code and now we're building it. You can see that uh, we're not really using compression. Everything is going into memory. And you can see that right now, memory used is 14 gigabytes and it's growing. Memory pressure is staying pretty low, nice and low in the green there. And we're over 16 gigabytes of memory used. That's the operating system operations as well as this process. We're up to almost 18, 18.45 gigabytes now. 19. So what's happening on the MacBook Pro? Let's take a look. Well, here we got a little bit more swap used, not too much, a lot more compressed. All the other processes that are running on the system are being compressed, put away by the operating system because that memory is needed for this compilation. And you can see the memory pressure is going up quite a bit. We're in the orange now. We're not hitting that 16 gigabytes in memory use because we can't. Uh, the operating system still does need some. So that pressure is going up, compressing more of what was held in memory before. All these processes that are running on the operating system are being put aside temporarily while this process is running. And you can see now it's over and it succeeded, it built, it didn't crash. It took 87.5 seconds to build on the MacBook Pro. Hey, that's pretty good, right? Well, guess what? The MacBook Air did it faster, 69 seconds. Don't even make that comment. That spread was much more when it came to comparing the memory than comparing the thermal throttling that we saw earlier. Memory, in this case, is more important. If you're building and compiling large projects like this, or doing anything that requires a lot of memory, LLMs being another good example, then the more memory, the better. For that amount of money that you're spending on this machine, the MacBook Air wins. Now, of course, ideally, the MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM would be better than both of these machines, but that's gonna cost you an extra 400 bucks. So of course, if you wanna host lots of Docker containers, and if you wanna scale that up to multiple instances, or if you wanna host virtual machines using Parallels, for example, I have lots of videos on that. I'll link to some down below. Yeah, you can run Windows and Linux on your Mac and it runs beautifully. You're gonna need to allocate memory to those virtual machines, memory that I don't know, it's going away from your main machine to, I mean, macOS does a really good job to handle that memory when it's not being used. But still, if you're running processes in Windows in a virtual machine and you're trying to run processes in your host, you're gonna need that memory. And if you wanna run that hot new model, that hot new Gemma 27 billion, here's my MacBook Air and I can select it and look at that, I can download it, it's 17 gigabytes and it looks nice, or that QWQ32 billion, that's gonna run, that's also 17 gigabytes, wow. And that fits nicely inside my 32 gigabyte machine, but what's going on here on the MacBook Pro? Oh no, Gemma 3, 27 billion, likely too large for this machine. What about the QWQ32 billion? Too large for this machine? I'm so sad now. I guess I'll have to run the 12 billion parameter model, but you see what I mean, right? With more RAM, not only will your processes not slow down because things have to either get swapped to disk, which means instead of memory, your operating system will be using the SSD to hold certain things while it's processing, making things slower. It's not necessarily gonna kill your SSD. It's gonna take a lot to kill your SSD on these machines unless it's defective. So that's not even an argument. The argument is that it's gonna slow things down. And of course, not having enough memory is gonna limit you. There's also that middle area where you have enough RAM to sort of get things done that you want. Let's say you go with a cheaper MacBook Air, like the base model with 16 gigs of RAM. You're still gonna be able to do a lot of things on that. But then if you're running too many things, things will start to slow down as well. Because at that point, your operating system may be using swap. It might be compressing things and task switching might slow down a little bit. It doesn't mean you can't. You can even successfully run things on an older eight gigabyte model just fine. And I made a video about that. You can check that out right over here. And if you wanna see my whole review of the MacBook Pros with the M4 family, watch this video right here. Thanks for watching folks. And I'll see you in the next one.